Health rocks. Inspired to be substance free. Hello, and welcome to the University of Maryland Extension 4-H Health Rocks training video for lessons 19 and 20. My name is Michelle Harmon, University of Maryland Extension 4-H program assistant in Garrett County. Lesson 19, that's how I feel. How do emotions affect decisions? Youth who experience strong emotions that can be highly charged. They see their lives as being very dramatic. Youth who let emotions rule are more likely to be part of the group that makes quick and premature decisions. Those who make quick decisions based on emotions are more likely to be involved in risky behaviors. Helping youth understand the role that emotions play and how they react and respond will benefit youth as they apply refusal skills in pressure situations. The energizer for this week's lesson is Speed Rabbit. These are the directions on how to play this game. Clear a space and stand in a circle with a facilitator in the middle. Teach a variety of motions that can be made by three people as described below. If you were to point to someone and say elephant, the person you point to makes the trunk by clasping their hands together, arms held straight, pointed to the ground, while people on either side make ears, one hand up above the middle person's head and the other hand near their hip. You point to someone and say cow, the person you point to will hold their hand out in front of them with their thumbs down. The people on either side will pull the middle person's thumbs. You point to someone and say flight attendant, that person mimes putting on an oxygen mask while the people on either side smile and point to the exits. Once these have been established and practiced, the game can begin. Tell students that you will point to someone and say elephant, cow, or flight attendant and count to 10 as fast as you can. If they can make the motion before you get to 10, continue. If not, the person you pointed to takes your place in the middle. After doing this for a little while, you can add further in movements. Roller coaster. The middle person puts their hands on their face or their cheeks and pull back to simulate G-force. The sides would put their hands in the air and scream. Rabbit. The middle person puts their hands on their head to make ears and the sides stomp their feet like thumper. Palm tree. The middle person will put their arms over their head, swaying, and the sides do a hula dance. Ostrich, the sides hold hands with each other to make a circle. The middle puts their head in the circle to simulate putting their head in the sand. Jello, the sides hold hands with each other around the middle person. This makes the bowl, and the middle person jiggles. You can have fun with this activity and allow it to go as long as you have time for it. What we are feeling at any given time can influence how we make decisions. Learning to realize this will help to make your decision-making skills even stronger. We'll now watch the video for lesson 19. Health rocks, inspired to be substance-free. Why do we do the things we do? Do you have any idea? Think about some of the things that have happened to you in the past week and how you've reacted to them or what you have done after that. And think about the emotions, what you were feeling just prior to those things happening or just after those things happened and the decisions that you've made because of them. Our feelings play such a huge part in what we decide every day and how we make those decisions. So I can give you one example for me in particular. I should never be allowed to go to the grocery store when I'm hungry. That's a bad, bad thing. I buy all sorts of things that are not on my grocery list, things that I would normally not buy just because I'm so hungry. Not a good idea to go grocery shopping when you're hungry. Just like it's probably not a good idea to make decisions if your emotions are really high or really low. Those decisions that you make at that time may not be the best decisions because you are not thinking entirely with your brain. Those feelings that you have 
can play such a big part in the decisions that you're making. So what are some of these feelings that can affect the decisions that we make? Well, if we're bored, if we're lonely, we're under a lot of stress, we're angry, we're happy, we're excited. There's so many different things that can play into those decisions. Other things that might affect how we make decisions is we want to fit in. We want to feel like we belong. We like that adrenaline rush when we make a decision or we're doing something that puts us in maybe just a little bit of danger or we're taking some risk. Maybe you just want to act more grown up. And so you think that this decision really shows how old you are and how mature you're getting to be. All of these things come into play when we're making decisions. How can these feelings or emotions get us into trouble when we're making decisions? Well, let's break it down a little bit. So, bored. We're feeling bored. It's early afternoon, there's nothing to do, haven't been able to get a hold of any of your friends. Oh, but mom and dad aren't home and you know just where they keep the beer. You think they'd notice if you took one? So something you shouldn't be thinking about when you're bored, those feelings of boredom are gonna get you in trouble. Instead, call a friend, take a walk, go outside, play with your dog, read a book, find some, something that interests you on the internet, maybe look up how to do something that you've been wanting to do. Pick something else. Don't let that feeling of boredom get you in trouble. What about if you're feeling really excited and you're just so excited and you can't hardly contain yourself and you've just gotta go do something and your friends are all with you and you guys are having a great time and somebody brings out their e-cigarette and they're passing it around and everybody's having fun. Not a great idea to partake in that. You're excited, you're having a good time and you want that feeling to continue. You wanna keep having fun with all of your friends and you certainly don't wanna be the one who says no and stop all that good feeling. Slow down and think again. This is again where those emotions can really get you into trouble. You get caught up in the moment and you're just having such a great time and you may be more inclined to partake in risky behavior or maybe that would be the time that your defenses are a little bit low and your friends are able to convince you to try it just this one time. These emotions can get you into trouble. You need to listen to that little voice in the back of your head. We all have it, that's our conscience. It talks to us when we're about to make a decision that may not be in our best interest. Listen to that little voice. When you're so excited and you just wanna keep the fun going and you don't wanna be the person to bring everybody down, listen to that little voice in the back of your head. We've talked before about short-term consequences and long-term consequences. Listening to that little voice can help keep you out of a lot of trouble and help keep you from facing some of those consequences. What are some other feelings that might get you into trouble? What about if you're feeling stressed? Schoolwork has been piling on top of you. Maybe there are some problems at home. You're just feeling like you're sinking and you just can't cope with anything else. And you start to remember about how your friend told you that Smoking marijuana really helps to relax her and she just doesn't think about anything, nothing stresses her anymore and you're starting to think, maybe I should try that. Just as a way to escape, get away from it all. Do you really think that's gonna be an answer? What's gonna happen the next time that you're feeling stressed? The time after that, the time after that, Pretty soon, you're not gonna be turning to marijuana just when you're stressed, you're gonna be turning to it anytime that you feel like you need to relax or you're just not happy with things. It's not an answer. These feelings can really turn around and kind of bite you in the back if you are not careful. But the positive thing is knowing how much your feelings can influence your decisions can help you to combat that by going into decisions with your eyes wide open. And if you can take a moment before you make a decision to really think about it, think about going back through those decision-making steps. 
You don't have to do all of them. You don't have to think about all of the options or anything like that. But a very important step is thinking about the consequences, both short-term and long-term consequences. It's an important step. Shouldn't take you more than a few seconds to kind of stop, quickly play through some of those consequences in your head, and then ask yourself, is it worth it? Is it worth it to get in that car with my friends after they've been drinking? Is it worth it to sneak alcohol out of the cabinet when mom and dad aren't home? Is it worth it to try the marijuana or maybe something a little bit harder just that one time? Is it worth it? Don't let your feelings get you into trouble. We all have them. We all feel bored or lonely or stressed or angry. We can't let those feelings rule us and we can't let those feelings get us into trouble. So remember, when you're going to make a decision and you have some choices in front of you, take a step back. Think about what you're feeling at that time. Take a couple seconds to think about the consequences of your choice of the action that you're about to take and ask yourself if it's worth it. Talk with each participant about what they have done over the last week and how they felt about what they did. Give examples. You took a test and received a good score. How did you feel? Happy? You stayed at home last night. How did you feel? Bored? Give each participant the how does it make me feel handout. In the first column, have the youth list five to seven specific things they either did or that happened to them over the last week. Examples may include being left out of a conversation or receiving praise from a teacher. In the column labeled, how did it make me feel, have youth write how each made them feel. Feelings can be positive, negative, or neutral. Have participants complete the column labeled, what did you do or how did you react? Give examples. If they took a test and felt happy, what did they do? They might text a friend or share the news with their parents. When they sat at home and were bored, they might have played a video game or fought with their siblings. When youth had finished the column, have them choose a situation to discuss. Ask for a volunteer to share a situation or use one of the ones listed here. You earned an A on a very hard test. Brainstorm all of the feelings different people might have. Is everyone going to feel the same way? Why or why not? Ask youth to brainstorm what they would do or how they would react to each of the feelings. Are they positive, negative, or neutral? How might those feelings lead to tobacco, alcohol, or drug use? Have youth complete the last two columns on the handout. What other choices that might have been made? What are the consequences of each choice? Explain to youth that often when someone experiments with tobacco, alcohol, or other drugs, they feel as though they have a good reason. Use the what's your reason handout to share some examples of reasons why youth may choose to do certain things. Divide students into groups of two or three youth. Have each group pick one of their situations and act it out for the group. First, with a negative reaction, and second, with a positive reaction. An example is when a friend ignored you in the lunchroom today. A negative reaction would be to talk badly about that person and start rumors. A positive reaction would be to go up to that friend and ask them what is wrong. Talk about how the youth felt in each situation. Lesson 19, Reflection. These questions can be used to lead a discussion about this activity. What are some things you did in the last week that made you feel good? What are some things you did in the last week that made you feel bad? How did those feelings affect what you did or how you reacted? Why is it important to think about reactions and responses before putting them into action? How do feelings play a role in making choices? How do consequences affect choices? What would a celebration or get together look like in a different culture or country? 
What would it look like in a different community? What would it look like in a different family? Why do some people respond differently? Lesson 19 summary. The everyday stresses and feelings that youth endure can sometimes cause them to look for an escape by using tobacco, alcohol, or drugs. Do you believe that the reasons that youth might provide for using tobacco, alcohol, and or other drugs would be negative reasons? What are some feelings that might encourage youth to think it is okay to vape, drink, or use drugs? The 4-H activity for lesson 19 is a lesson that was created by the 4-H exploration team, a team led by faculty and staff of Maryland Extension. According to the Bay Stat team, more than 17 million people live in the Chesapeake Bay watershed. The Bay watershed is very large and land within the watershed is devoted to a variety of uses. Some land is developed as residential areas where people live and some is developed as commercial areas where stores and businesses operate. Other areas are preserved natural environments such as forests. Other land is used for agriculture, the production of food and other products like timber and fiber. All of these lands uses are important. Because these types of land use will take place in the Bay Watershed, actions within one of these sectors will affect what happens in others. This lesson addresses ecological interactions between the Bay Watershed and the relationships that exist between wildlife and humans' agriculture. Nearly one quarter of the Bay's watershed area is devoted to agriculture. The Bay Watershed is also home to a large number and variety of wild plants and animals. There are many examples of positive relationships between wildlife and farmland. Bees pollinate crops. Ladybugs help prevent crop damage by eating aphids. Cultivated oysters filter bay waters, helping to improve water quality. However, wildlife and agriculture can also compete and in some cases harm one another. Deer can cause excessive damage to crops like corn by eating the plants. Birds can also cause crop damage. In the spring, various bird species eat the corn seeds as they sprout. Geese can damage small grain plants like rye and wheat by pulling the plants out of the ground in the winter when the plants are young and the fields are wet. Because wildlife and farming are both important, we take steps to conserve both and make them as compatible as possible. Farmers may install fencing to exclude wildlife from fields or apply pesticides to prevent crop damage. In contrast, Farmers are conscientious about preserving wildlife in natural areas. They implement practices that benefit wildlife, such as maintaining unmowed field buffers to provide habitat for native birds. We will now watch a video on this lesson. The exploration lesson, Who Lives Here? Species of the Bay Region and Watershed. Ask the students to brainstorm a list of wild animals that live in the Bay Watershed. Make a list of their ideas on a whiteboard or a sheet of paper. Next, show the students the wildlife photos provided with this lesson. These are the photos that we have provided with the lesson. We have a diamondback terrapin, oysters, a nutria, red tail hawk, blue heron, Largemouth bass, white tailed deer, the Baltimore checker spot butterfly, bald eagle, a bat, a red fox, a raccoon. a yellow perch, and a blue crab. Have the students share what they know about each of the animals pictured. Ask them to think about how each animal picture relates to the farming practices and agriculture. Lead into a discussion that some animals are helpful to farmers and that some cause challenges for farmers. Explain that many farmers manage their land to benefit the animals that live in the Bay watershed. Ask students if they know of any practices used to benefit wildlife animals. Share some examples with the class. The next activity will be fact matching. 
you have a sheet that has separate facts wrote on it for each of the animals. These facts will be cut apart and you will give them to the, the students and have them match it with each animal that the fact represents. You can review the an answers and discuss the characteristics of each species. We have the list here of fact matching and you will receive this with your materials. A second activity that can be done with the students is to have the species interaction scenarios sheet and cut the scenarios apart. You have the scenario outcome signs and you can place each sign in a different area of your classroom. Explain that students will choose a scenario from the pile. After reading their statement, students will stand beside the sign that best describes the relationship between wildlife and humans and or agriculture depicted in their scenario. After the students have moved to their chosen area, have each student read the scenario and explain why he or she selected this specific type of interaction. Interpretations of a given scenario may vary from student to student. If other students believe a particular scenario could have been classified differently, allow them to share reasons for alternate classifications. Emphasize that interactions between humans and agriculture and the environment are complex. Below are two examples of how one statement may be interpreted in multiple ways. Cows standing in a stream provide a benefit to their owners because they don't need to provide watering troughs. However, nutrients contained in cow manure may contribute to water quality problems when cows defecate in streams and poor water quality harms humans. A second statement, herbicides help homeowners by providing an easy way to get rid of weeds, but some herbicides may eventually end up in soils and waterways and contribute to pollution. Something else that you can have the students do would be to research species that live in the Bay Watershed and share some facts to the class through discussion or oral presentation. This is simply an extra activity if you would like to take the lesson farther. Lesson 20, learning to say no. Youth are inevitably going to be confronted with difficult situations and pressures from peers and others. It is best to teach youth refusal skills and strategies before they are really needed. By thinking situations through ahead of time, it helps youth deal with negative issues and pressures. Teaching refusal skills and specific strategies for resisting peer pressure is important for helping youth to learn how to handle risky behavior. The icebreaker for lesson 20 is a game called Connect Tiles. We will watch a video to show you how to play this game. This explains the game Connect Tiles. You will see that there are several puzzle pieces that we will be using to explain this game. There are 25 tiles. You will want to spread them out in a random order, face up on the floor or table. Gather your group around the puzzle pieces and survey the plethora of clues before you. Explain to your group that each side of the tile contains an image. It is associated or connects to another tile to ultimately form a five by five solution, five rows of five tiles each. Your group is challenged to assemble the 25 piece puzzle as efficiently and quickly as possible. It is not necessarily a timed event, but we don't want this to take three hours either. It might help your group to suggest that in some cases, the association between two tiles may be based on a sound, a meaning or an idea. When in doubt, think cryptically. For further help, explain to your group that there are several levels of clues. Any one or all three of these will help your group to solve the puzzle. At a micro level, the image on every tile will connect to another tile. The orientation of the letters inside the circles all face the same direction. And finally, all 25 letters spell a sentence. Here are some examples of the, of the way the tiles go together. You can see here, that we have a horse and a shoe, and it connects to the tile with the horseshoe. We also have here a picture of a butterfly and a butter and a paper airplane flying. This shows a three-way connection. We have ice cube, with an ice cube 
and we have an ear and a ring with an earring. This is the way the puzzle pieces will go together for your youth. As stated before, when they're, let, when they're put together, the letters in the center of the circles will end up spelling a word. Learning to say no can take practice. We will be practicing ways to say no. We will watch the video for lesson 20. Health rocks, inspired to be substance free. Just say no. We've all heard it. Sometimes it's not that easy to do. I have a few pictures here. Maybe these will help. Some ideas of ways that we can say no. Haha, -ha. no. Okay, let me think about this. Uh, no. No, I don't care. Bro, bro, just no. How about no? So these are some fun, lighthearted ways of trying to say no. Sometimes it's not that easy though. We've talked before about peer pressure and what peer pressure is. So remember peer pressure is when you're with a group of your peers, whether they're your friends from school, other people who are the same age as, as you, or maybe they're peers that you share something in common with, such as a sports athletic team, a dance team, a cheerleading team, anything like that. So these are your peers, people who are roughly at the same level as you in something. Peer pressure comes about when these people who are roughly equal to you are pressuring you to do something that you may not wanna do. Now there can be positive peer pressure, and we've talked about that before also, about how if you surround yourself with people who are trying to better themselves and you are with them, that's gonna put some positive peer pressure on you to better yourself, and that's a good place to be. It's good to be around those people who push you to become better. What's not good is when you surround yourself with those people who may try to bring you down, who are not at the same level as you to begin with, and they're pulling you down to the level that they're at, whether it's their grades in school or perhaps risky behavior, such as using alcohol, drugs, or tobacco products. So you need to learn ways to be able to say no. Like I said, Sometimes it's not easy. We get told over and over and over again, just say no, just say no. But when you're in that situation, and these are people maybe you look up to, and you are trying to figure out how you're gonna say no without having them think poorly of you, or maybe you won't be invited next time if you tell them no this time. So practicing saying no helps you get better. I know it sounds silly, but even just practicing in a mirror, saying no in different ways can help you feel more comfortable with having to say that. And there are ways to do it without just simply saying no. You can say, not this time, just don't feel like it tonight. I gotta be home pretty soon, it just, I don't have time. You can even blame it on your parents. My parents would kill me. I need to keep up my grades, this just isn't a good idea. Any number of things. You can tell them you're concerned about your health, that this is not good, won't be good for your health. Any number of ways to get you out. Some may be just ways to get you out for that time, such as saying you're just not feeling it tonight. That buys you a little bit of time. This pressure can be tough, I know, and it can be so hard when everybody around you you think is participating in what's going on. And maybe you are in a situation where there might be a couple of you and everybody but you is participating. And those situations are the hardest. But that's when it's time to really dig down deep in yourself and be strong. Be true to yourself. Think about those goals that you've set for yourself, what you want to accomplish, and think about, remember consequences, think about the consequences of what saying yes might lead to whether it's just getting caught and being grounded forever by your parents, 
or perhaps getting caught and having the police get involved. Maybe it might be something worse. That one time can lead to a lifetime of trouble if you get addicted. These are all things to keep in mind, thinking about what happens if you say yes. That should really be more concern than what could happen if you say no. Surrounding yourself with good people who are gonna build you up are gonna be okay if you say no. They're not gonna be trying to drag you down anyway. If you're surrounded by peers who are gonna look down on you and give you grief for saying no, those are the people you need to surround yourself with. You need to be looking for better people. People who are gonna help you better you. Not people who are gonna be trying to drag you down to their level. That's not what you need. So practice saying no. If you need to, take a comedic route. Laugh it off. No, not for me, not this time. Think about different ways that you can do say no, different scenarios that you might put yourself in, find yourself in that you might have to say no. Practice. The more you practice, the easier it will become. And like I said, I know it sounds silly, but practicing in a mirror, practicing in your room when you're by yourself, practice with somebody else. Maybe you have a friend that also perhaps faces these kind of situations. Maybe you can practice together. Better yet, have a buddy system. If you're gonna be out someplace where you're afraid you might find yourself in one of these situations, have a buddy with you. Two people saying no, is gonna bolster your confidence. It's gonna give you more power to be able to say no and to stick by it. If you're not by yourself, it becomes much easier to get around that peer pressure. So use a buddy system. Have somebody with you, somebody else that's gonna be saying no also. You guys can hold each other accountable. Help each other out. Have each other's back. At any rate, I know to just say no, just say no, that we all have heard since we were little. I heard it when I was little, you're hearing it now. It's still a good phrase and it's still a good thing to do. I'm not saying it's easy, it's not. I know, I can tell you it's not easy, but it's very important. It's very important for your present and it's important for your future. So practice saying no, have a buddy, that'll help you say no, Take, spend some time talking to yourself in the mirror, figure out a few different ways that you can say no, whether it's kind of a laughing it off no, a firm no way, no how, polite no thanks. Maybe you could even try in a different language, yet not happening. Whatever works for you. And you might need a couple different plans, but you do what works best for you just keep working on saying no. Share with the group that they are going to learn how to refuse tobacco, alcohol, and other drugs when they are being pressured or have the urge to just try the substance once. Explain that you are going to give them two situations and ask how they would respond. Read through each situation separately and allow youth to answer as part of the entire group. Situation one, a group of your friends is celebrating and asks you to join. One of your friends opens a beer and passes it around. How would you respond? How does it make you feel? How might your feelings guide you in what you decide to do? Situation two, a classmate is vaping in a school restroom. She tries to get you to vape, telling you that the raspberry flavor is really good. How would you respond? How does it make you feel? How might your feelings guide what you decide to do? Give each participant a copy of the Ways to Say No handout. Review each of the ways to say no. Ask you which of the ways to say no they would use when responding to the situations listed. What are some of the other ways to say no that they could have used? Give each participant the how do I refuse handout. Have them work in groups of two or three to come up with their own situations that relate to tobacco, alcohol, and other drugs. 
these situations can be real or imagined. Give youth plenty of time to work together and complete the worksheet. What would your response be to the different situations? Which of the ways to say no would be the best choice? How would saying no make you feel? Was it hard? Was it easy? Why? Can you think of times when your feelings might get in the way of making the best decision? In pairs, have youth role play the situations they wrote and practice saying no. Have them rotate partners so they have to practice with several different participants. Lesson 20, reflection. These questions may be used to lead a reflection on the lesson and activity from this lesson. Did it get easier to say no now that you have practiced? Why or why not? Which of the ways to say no are the easiest to use? Does practicing something always make it easier? Why or why not? Are some of the ways to say no better to use in some situations than in others? Which one would you find the easiest to use without having to think about it? In what other situation might you use the ways to say no? How will what you have learned help you with your friends? Why might it be harder to use these ways of saying no in real life? Having options in the way to say no can only benefit you. The more you practice something, the easier it will get. When you are faced with the options that may get you in trouble or lead you to risky behavior, remember the ways to say no. Do not hesitate to use these suggestions and practice them when you have the opportunity. The 4-H activity for Lesson 20 is a STEM activity. We will be creating a helicopter. We will now watch the video to exemplify how to do this lesson. Today we're going to be making a helicopter. So what we need for this is a propeller, a craft stick, two rubber bands, some cardstock, a paper clip, some tape, and a pair of scissors. So the first thing you're going to want to do is cut a helicopter shape or some shape out of your cardstock. This doesn't have to be any kind of exact, you're just wanting a shape that is going to create drag for your helicopter. So, there's my shape. You wanna take your craft stick and slip it into the sleeve on your propeller. Next, you are going to want to take your helicopter shape and tape it onto your propeller. Oh, I'm sorry, onto your craft stick. Right. You want to take your paper clip and you want to unbend it just slightly. And you are going to tape this. onto the bottom of your craft stick. Now this is going to provide the propulsion for your helicopter, so you wanna make sure that it is securely taped to the bottom of your craft stick. Okay, now we're ready to attach our rubber bands. So you'll want to attach them to the hook up here on the propeller. and then down onto your paper clip. Okay, so our, our helicopter has been constructed. Now we're ready to see if it works. You wanna tip the propeller towards you and wind it clockwise. And you're going to want to wind it enough it's gonna take probably anywhere from 50 to 80 revolutions because you want this rubber band here to coil on itself. You wanna provide lots of power there so that way when you let it go, you've got plenty of lift for your helicopter. 
So once you think that you've got this wound well enough and your rubber band is starting to coil back on itself, which you can kind of see this doing here, how it's starting to coil more, and it starts getting much more challenging to wind your propeller, then you're ready to let it go. So what you wanna do when you're ready to let it go, ooh, it's, mine's trying to go on its own here, you wanna hold it away from you and I'm gonna tell you right now, this is probably gonna fly off camera if it doesn't hit me in the face. And you want to let it go. And there we did it. Our helicopter flew away. Thank you for watching the training video for lessons 19 and 20. Please email Ashley when you have completed this training so she will know that the training has been completed. Again, please remember to turn in your attendance sheet after each weekly session with your youth. Thank you for all of your help.